Joining me right now in his first interview since the signing, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross. Mr. Secretary, it's good to see you. Congratulations on getting this across the finish line. Well, thank you, Maria. It was a wonderful day yesterday, and there'll be another very good day today, hopefully as the USMCA gets approved. I want to I want to read you one comment from Cornerstone Macro, which is a research firm on Wall Street, and the analyst there writes this: the purchases in the China deal are very difficult to track, uh, and I continue to believe fuzzy math is uh, sure to be at work. The ag purchases way below advertised, and the enforcement mechanism is exactly what we wrote about, and that is toothless. Is the enforcement mechanism toothless, Mr. Secretary? No, that's those are silly comments. This agreement has the most precise and the most effective trade enforcement procedures of any trade agreement any country has ever had. Let me explain to you how it works. Great. There will be set up by each side a group a, to review disputes, a, a working level group. If they can't resolve things, it gets put up to the vice ministerial level. If, if after a very short period that doesn't resolve it, the complaining party, presumably U.S., then has the right, as long as they act in good faith and as long as we act proportionately, to unilaterally put tariffs or other retaliatory action on China and they cannot reprise against us. No trade agreement has ever had any procedure like that. Second, yeah. he's, that fellow said it was hard to identify what products would be involved. Well, actually, there's a multi-page annex to the agreement, which we're keeping confidential, that goes harmonized code number by harmonized code number, the products, the industrial products that are included in the commitment to buy more goods. So I'm afraid this fellow just hasn't really read the agreement or thought it through. The enforcement is probably the single most important part of this agreement, because without real enforcement, all you have is a pile of pages. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and we've seen China break promises before. So that enforcement, I know, is very important to, to, the, to your team. Uh, we also have this idea that we're going to see more business for, for American companies because China will open up its market. J.P. Morgan tells me that Jamie Dimon was on this program this week in an exclusive interview, and he said that he's already gotten his license to operate uh, a bank in China 100 percent rather than being a minority shareholder, 49 percent versus uh, and 51 percent owned by the Chinese. And we see uh, headlines this morning that Visa, MasterCard, and American Express uh, will be able to be part of the payments market in China. Right. How important is that to growth, Secretary? Well, that's important. The commitments that were made to get to the 200 increment in two, over two years above and beyond what we're already doing with them include $35 billion in services. And part of that, of course, would be financial services. The other components are $75 billion for industrial goods, $40 to $50 billion for agricultural products. And um, that's the kind of detail that we have in this agreement. It's very, mm -hmm. very precise. So Look I want to get any your other take, trade yeah. agreement. Yeah, you know, I want to get your take on, on what the impact is to economic growth, Secretary, because I spoke with Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin on Sunday about this new deal, about the agricultural purchases as well. Here's a, uh, here's a look at what your colleague, uh, the Secretary of Treasury, said Sunday. Right. So you expect the Chinese to buy 40 to $50 billion of agricultural products from the United States then? I do. Let me just say it's 200 billion of additional products across the board over the next two years, and specifically in agriculture, 40 to 50 billion. So this is a big opportunity for our farmers, and I think some people have questioned whether they can produce it. And the president said they're going to go out and buy more land and produce plenty of agriculture. That, that are, those are some big numbers, Secretary. 200 billion in buys. What is that going to do for economic growth, in your view? Uh, let's call it 2020, 2021. Well, the math is pretty straightforward. Assume that it's evenly distributed between the two years. That would be $100 billion a year. 
That's a half a percent on our total economy. So anybody mm. who thinks this is a trivial thing just can't add and subtract very well. <laughs> half a, a percentage number. point is a very yeah. big number. In Absolutely. addition, we'll shortly have the U.S., uh, Canada, Mexico deal, and that's going to add as well. So whatever lingering fears anybody might have had about a recession, very hard to imagine a recession occurring in the face of these two trade deals. Adding together USMCA and the China deal, that's right. over two trillion dollars of trade. This two is huge. Two trillion of trade. That's Incredible an enormous progress. Number. Secretary, enormous we were number. just talking with uh, Senator Joni Ernst. She said that the Senate will pass and vote to pass uh, the USMCA today at, uh, ten, at ten, 11 a.m. And, um, and, and then we spoke with uh, Senator uh, Lankford, who said it's going to be on its way to the president's desk by 12 noon today. So a couple of questions on USMCA. Uh, do you expect it to be signed into law by the president within the next week, given the fact that we're expecting passage in the Senate in just just a couple of hours. Uh, and, and beyond that, what's the next important trade deal that you want to handle? I know that you've been in talks with India, but the president has also mentioned Europe quite a few times. Well, think about it this way. Our negotiating position with the next party is much stronger now that we have both the, the phase one with China and USMCA because that solidifies our base, that takes all, any pressure off farmers, takes any pressure off the industrial side, takes pressure off the financial side. So we're much stronger prepared for whatever is the next negotiation. Uh, Commissioner Hogan, the trade negotiator for the European community, is in the, Washington this week. We have some meetings scheduled this week. And so there'll be some discussions starting. But our trading position is infinitely better already just because of these two deals. Yeah, I can see that. Let me ask you about taxes, Secretary, because National Economic Council Director Larry Kudlow telling Fox Business yesterday that there are plans for Tax Cuts 2.0. Watch this. The President directed me to produce what we're calling Tax Cuts 2.0. It will be published sometime during the campaign mm -hmm. as a message for future Trump economic growth policies, particularly emphasis on the middle class, in his second term. Uh, I don't want to do any specifics because there are no specifics and we're pulling it together. Are we going to see plans for lower taxes this year, 2020, Secretary? Well, that's one of our objectives for the second term because we've already seen the very strong results of both deregulation and tax cut in the first term. We've learned some things about it. There's some fine tuning that could be done, but directionally, we're moving toward lower taxes, especially lower taxes for middle income and below people. All right, we will leave it there. Secretary Wilbur Ross, it's great to see you this morning, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Good to be on with you. And to you. We will see you soon.